呃，我们再把视野放到东南亚，好，呃，这是一家商品交易总额十五亿美金的电商平台，大家应该都听过它的名字叫 Lazada， 好，那它目前已经在东南亚六国，好，嗯、呃，这么大的商品交易有呃这么广的区域，其实也只是在短短的五年之间创造出来，这是二零零二零一一年，好 ，Rocket Internet 在新加坡成立。的公司，那很抱歉，讲者因为台风的关系，今天没有办法到现场。待会我们会用三个阶段来跟他进行互动。第一个阶段，他有一个简短的问候的影片；第二个阶段，他会用语音配合 PowerPoint 的方式跟各位分享 Lazada 的故事。最后，还是一样，欢迎所有的朋友透过麦克风来跟他交流。好，好，呃，我们接下来就听听 Lazada 的故事。我们先用一段简短的影片，让 Lazada 马来西亚的 CEO。跟大家问候一下，他的大名叫做 Hans Peter Russell。我们现在看看荧幕。Russell, I'm part of the founding team of Lazada. I'm currently the, the CEO of Lazada Malaysia. I want to apologize、uh, that I cannot be in Taipei today.、Uh, I heard it's very windy and rainy, and for whatever reason, AirAsia would not、uh, fly to Taipei, so I cannot be there with you today.、Um, I actually was never in Taipei or Taiwan. So, but I'm looking forward to uh, come. Um, but still, I've、uh, taken the time to,、uh, you know, prepare a, a small presentation where、I、talk a little bit about the Lazada story、uh, from the last four and a half years when we were founded in March 2012 up until、uh, today, this year, where the Alibaba Group、uh, bought a majority stake in, in our company.、Um, I will talk a little bit about how we built the Lazada brand. What were the Main challenges and and the barriers for e-commerce we were facing in the beginning,、um, and how did we tackle them, and how did we create an impact in certain areas with initiatives and and the things that we we implemented. And then I will also talk a little bit about our cross-border business, which we started in 2013,、uh, where we started bringing、uh, local Chinese and Hong Kong-based merchants into our platform,、uh, enabled them to sell their products. Uh, into Southeast Asia across all markets、uh, by just having one platform to work with, and, and what the challenges were there, what are the solutions that we provided for those local Chinese、uh, and, and Hong Kong-based、uh, merchants, and what the future will bring,、uh, not only for、uh, Chinese and Hong Kong merchants but also for、uh, Korean, Taiwanese、uh, brands and merchants, and、uh, for merchants all over the world.、Um, so I hope you you enjoy my presentation. And、uh, I, I look forward to see you soon in Taiwan. Hi, 好可惜啊，没有来过台湾。本来今天第一次哈，不过好事多磨，相信未来我们可以在台湾看到 Mr. Russell 哈。啊，待会非常简单，他会谈他们面临的挑战以及怎么样克服这些挑战哈。第二块他会谈这个跨境电商哈，这一块是成长非常非常大的领域哈。其实我们台下很多观众将来也许可以透过 Lazada 平台把东西卖到东南亚去。事实上呢，阿里巴巴。因为看好这一块哈，投资了拉扎达，现在占有拉扎达百分之九的股权啊，所以大家可以从马云的心中想，这是多大的一个愿景。好，那接下来我们会用语音加上 PowerPoint 的方式来进行这一段互动啊，大家在互动的过程之中可以记下大家想听的问题，在语音跟 PowerPoint 结束之后，我们就把麦克风打开，让现场的朋友跟 Mr. Russell 来互动。好，所以接下来我们就看看拉扎达的分享。So, hello. My name is Hans Peter Ressel, and the CEO of Lazada Malaysia. And I'm today going to talk a little bit about、um, the challenges we were facing when building the Lazada brand,、uh, with a special focus on our cross-border、uh, activities. On slide two,、uh, a little agenda. First, I'm going to also introduce Lazada、um, very, very quickly.、Um, then talk about how we set up our strategy. What were the main Issues and challenges we were facing, and how we tackled them in the last couple of years, and then also an introduction into our cross-border activities, some very special challenges we were facing there, how we、um, addressed them, and what impact、uh, we we had so far, both in local but also in the cross-border、um, business in the last couple of years. On slide three, you see a small introduction、uh, about Lazada. Uh, so、Lazada is the leading e-commerce player in entire Southeast Asia and also in Malaysia. We are the leading one-stop online selling and shopping destination in Southeast Asia, and also a couple of numbers here at the top 
Um, we have, uh, in Malaysia alone, uh, more than 800 employees, uh, more than 12,000 sellers, six to seven million unique SKUs. Uh, and we also operate two warehouses, one on Peninsula Malaysia in Subang and one in East Malaysia in Kuching. Over the last couple of years, we are um, very proud to uh, have partnered up with a couple of uh, worldwide known uh, investors, including uh, Tesco, Temasek, and very recently in the year 2016, six months ago, um, the Alibaba Group, biggest e-commerce player globally. We are present in six markets. Uh, we are in Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Philippines, and we also have operations in Hong Kong uh, and in Shenzhen, where we have a small office responsible for um, our cross-border activities. In all of our markets, uh, we are, we're number one in the B2C commerce market. If you look at the bottom of the chart, uh, how big we are relative to the rest of the market, uh, you can see that when it comes to the search trends, when it comes to the visits or the app downloads, that uh, we are by far the biggest player here in Malaysia. And if you, for example, add up all the visits of the next uh, big four uh, players in Malaysia, they don't even add up to the traffic that we are able to generate on our desktop and mobile platforms. On slide four, uh, you see a little bit of a timeline of the activities we had and the imp impact we were able to generate uh, in, our, in our market. So we were founded in March 2012. We went online the moment we were able to source 10,000 different unique products. Um, that was at the end of March 2012. And very, very quickly in the same year, we also opened up our first fulfillment center, which was back then still quite small, only 15,000 square feet. In the same year, we launched for the first time our regional online revolution campaign, a big campaign where we were really tapping uh, with a campaign that was uh, structured the same way with the same mechanics in all our markets um, at the same time and um, went live with a big big bang with lots of coverage uh, by media and where we boosted our business for the first time in a very short time um, by the factor of three to four X within a couple of days. 2013, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this later, uh, we, we saw a shift, we saw that the, the, the starting shift of um, people spending more time on their mobile phones, uh, so we also uh, decided to uh, create a dedicated platform for these customers and create our own uh, Lazada mobile shopping app on the Android platform, the iOS followed later. And also, uh, back then we were still a traditional B2C retailer storing all our products in our own warehouses across all markets. But in late summer 2013, we opened our platform um, as a marketplace where we then onboarded a lot of local and international small and big merchants to sell their products directly to their customers on our platform. Beginning of 2014, we then also enabled merchants that were based outside of Southeast Asia, outside of our core markets, um, to sell their products uh, to our platform. Uh, we started uh, in Hong Kong, where we basically in the first quarter of 2014 then onboarded a lot of big merchants that were already much more sophisticated and had a lot more experience from the big platforms um, like Amazon and eBay and Alibaba uh, to also sell their products directly to uh, customers in Southeast Asia. Um, by the end of August, beginning September 2014, we delivered our one millionth order, which was um, after two and a half years in the business, a, a very, very big milestone that we were very proud of. Um, and after then, um, the business really, really accelerated a lot with additional assortment coming in from cross-border. Uh, we even then had to open a second fulfillment center in 2015 in Kuching, which was still small, but um, it, it, was, it was enough to really cater to the increasing demand um, also in more rural areas, not only metropolitan areas and the big cities, but also more rural areas in East Malaysia to also deliver a great custom experience there. And then we started really creating an, an ecosystem and, and, and nurturing and helping the ecosystem uh, to also grow and grow the entire market uh, together uh, where we then organized a unity sale 
uh, with a lot of e-commerce players, not only uh, players that are selling products, but also players that are selling services, that are selling groceries, uh, Uber and Grab, and a lot of e-commerce verticals. Uh, we came together and had one big joint campaign to educate the market about the potential and the growth um, of e-commerce. On the next slide, slide five, obviously then in 2016, the big highlight uh, when we basically welcomed the largest e-commerce company worldwide as our main investor and shareholder, Alibaba Group. It's something that four and a half years uh, into the business of four years made us very proud um, to, to be considered a valuable partner uh, to the Alibaba Group. And it just, it just reflects the, the, the huge potential of e-commerce in Southeast Asia and also the role that we have started to play in, in this ecosystem. Uh, and it also validates the, validated for us the, the, the choices, the strategic choices that we made when we were building uh, Lazada, and when we were building our company the way um, we built it over the last couple of years. So let's continue on slide six. Um, we're now going to talk a little bit about um, the e-commerce strategy that we had based on the challenges and the barriers that we saw here in the early days. Um, slide seven summarizes uh, these challenges that we saw in the beginning. Um, there was a lot of logistics uh, challenges that we had. The infrastructure uh, on the warehousing and on the courier company side was not that developed compared to Western markets. Um, we had, by being active in the beginning in five markets and then Singapore coming in later in 2013, with a lot of diversity, a lot of, lot of markets, um, we had different issues. When you look into Philippines and Indonesia with their thousands of islands, and then you have in Malaysia essentially uh, two big areas, Peninsula and East Malaysia, uh, right from the start we had to uh, face different, different environments that we had to crack in a very localized, unique way. Um, obviously, across all markets, a low lead time was still preferred, so that was a challenge we had to, we had to overcome here. Uh, second, payments. I think especially in the beginning, uh, there was still a lot of trust and credibility issues, being a new player that no one really knows of. Um, not everyone wanted to you know, uh, do online transactions with a credit card, so it was very crucial to have right from the start a cash and delivery payment method available. Lack of experience, as opposed to markets like Taiwan, South Korea, China, the seller base was not yet that experienced when it comes to doing business online. So um, they didn't have the experience, they didn't have the resources, they didn't want to allocate dedicated resources, and it really took a lot of time to uh, create a nice selling experience for our sellers to make them hooked up uh, with e-commerce. And then lastly, uh, what we saw in 2013, and I mentioned before, uh, the shift to mobile, a lot of people spending more and more time hours and hours on mobile platforms, social media, on the go, um, is something that we had to cater to and had to change our approach over the last couple of years. On slide eight, let me deep dive a little bit into the logistics part. I think here it was very important to offer logistics services to customers and sellers to overcome some of these um, infrastructural issues that we had in the beginning. On the right side, for example, like today our warehouse that we're in uh, in Malaysia is a 250,000 square feet warehouse, 16 times bigger than our first one. And right now it's the biggest e-commerce, dedicated e-commerce warehouse in the entire region. Um, we also use this uh, warehouse to offer services to sellers called Fulfillment by Lazada, where we help sellers, if they cannot scale up that easily, we help them to scale up by in-housing some part of their operations uh, to uh, help them grow their business and uh, especially show them that, that investments are necessary, but not always required if you can partner up with marketplaces and platforms that can help you uh, solve some of these logistical um, challenges. We also had to set up our own delivery fleet. Not in, in, in some markets, uh, the, the courier companies simply weren't delivering fast enough. They were not covering all areas in the, in the country. And that's why uh, even in the early days, um, especially with the trust and credibility issues, we had to convince customers that um, we are a very credible platform, trustworthy platform, by simply delivering their items very, very fast. The cross-border angle here um, also came into place, obviously, 
cross-border shipments uh, usually take a little bit longer than local shipments. We came up with a solution called Lazada Global Shipping, a shipping solution for merchants that want to do cross-border e-commerce business, uh, which we introduced for our merchants. I'm going to discuss this a little bit later, but essentially um, improves the customer experience by providing a faster, more reliable, and more transparent delivery experience. So let's continue on slide six. Um, we're now going to talk a little bit about um, the e-commerce strategy that we had based on the challenges and the barriers that we saw here in the early days. Um, slide seven summarizes uh, these challenges that we saw in the beginning. Um, there was a lot of logistics. Uh, let me continue on slide nine um, with the payment challenges we were facing. First and foremost, it was very crucial to offer a broad range of payment options, credit card, online banking, cash and delivery, and in some markets even, and over-the-counter payments um, offline. Um, here, it was very crucial for us to not only offer the payment methods, but also start partnering up with the banks directly to also offer additional services like installments um, and easy refund processes. Cash and delivery, obviously, was a very crucial part to just even convince those that uh, did not really trust the platform in the first place, but still wanted to give it a try, um, a low-risk try, and then once convinced that the experience was great, most of these customers actually started uh, shifting back to online and credit card payments. Um, here on the online payments, you see the direct integration that we have with some of the internal online payment infrastructure the banks provide themselves for the customers and uh, we tapped into this infrastructure to provide an even more seamless online payment experience. And then most recently, uh, here uh, in Malaysia, we uh, were launching a over-the-counter payment method where uh, basically customers can place their orders and then walk into selected 7-Eleven stores and then pay do their payment there and then only get the items delivered after. So this is something we rolled out recently and which we will gradually roll out um, most likely to all 7-Eleven stores uh, across entire Malaysia. On slide 10, talking about the seller experience, talking about the, the sophistication of the local seller base, I think here for us it was very crucial to, to help sellers provide a robust customer experience and for us, it was very important to give them also a very robust seller experience so that it's actually engaging and fun for our sellers to do business online. Uh, we were doing this with a couple of initiatives. One initiative was also uh, providing a seller center app to, to our sellers was very important. It was not, even, not only customers were more and more uh, mobile online, but also our sellers. So by providing a dedicated app, um, our sellers could start monitoring and conducting their online business on the go by simply checking how many orders were coming in uh, through the app. We also helped them through our Lazada University to really get up to speed. We helped them um, uh, by, by really communicating with them all the time, sharing reports with them on their performance, educating them in our university how to read these uh, reports, how to interpret these reports, how to really come up with the right decisions and the right actions based on numbers, based on data. Um, and then we uh, still have a support center, um, a partner support center, similar to a customer call center where merchants at any given point in time um, could call us if they had any questions, if there were some issues, if they didn't really know how to still use our backend. We always took our time to uh, really be there for our merchants and create a nice and great and engaging customer experience, which on slide 11 you then also see um, that will lead then, or that led for us to a high seller engagement. We were, um, every year we are having one or two big seller events. The last one in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, we had more than uh, 1,000 sellers participating. Um, we have in between uh, the years, in between the campaigns, we always have smaller seller events um, where we retrain some of them, where we uh, inform them about upcoming campaigns and how to participate and contribute. And it's just, uh, we're very proud about the um, e-commerce ecosystem on the seller side, uh, the engagement we that, uh, could create, the loyalty um, we, we see uh, today, and the excitement of, of, of those sellers 
to conduct their online uh, business and activities on our Lazada platform. 好，因为啊、um, ，Mr. Russell， 因为 Mr. Russell 只有接下来这十分钟能跟大家互动啊，所以很抱歉，我们要在这边把他的简报。先打断了哈，刚才虽然非常简短，但是还是有很多的牛肉啊，而且大家应该可以和我一样体会到这个现在我们看到 Lazada 的故事，跟刚才我们听到的 Zalora 的故事慢慢重叠了。Zalora 谈到了六个阶段，那我们现在听到的是四个阶段啊，分别是物流、付费，还有第三个就是一些商家缺乏经验怎么办？好，然后最后刚才他有预告的一点是 Mobile 哈，怎么样借由 Mobile 这个事。趁势而起哈，但但是刚才投影片我们没有走到 mobile 这个阶段，好，但是不管在物流跟 payment 上，大家可以看到两家公司的重叠点。我们现在已经在播号了，所以我们邀请现场的朋友来跟 Mr. Russell 互动一下哈。好，目前有没有？好，刚才在 Zalora 的时候，我似乎注意到这位先生您有问问题，很抱歉刚才没有时间跟您互动，愿不愿意在这个阶段来跟 Mr. Russell 互动？好，谢谢您的大名是，我看一下。好，啊、呃，是，好，啊、呃，这位是，你好，我是 K A Bus 的 Gino， 哦、oh, ，是是 Gino， 谢谢，我们掌声给 Gino 鼓励一下，好不好？谢谢，好 ，Mr. Russell， are you there？ Yes， hello， great， so the first question is from Gino， yeah, go ahead， hello, Gino， Mr. Russell， I'm Gino from K K Bus Group， uh， I just have one quick question for you， uh， I just want to know what's the strategy for the， uh， your companies。In Taiwan, and I want to know because I think one Taiwan is one of the most important country in the Southeast Asia, and、uh, I saw that Taiwan is not in your map right now. So I I just wondering what kind of the strategy that for your company in Taiwan. Yeah,、um, thanks for the question. So I think right now we're we're only in the six markets in Southeast Asia,、um, and、uh, so 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 far. Uh, there are no immediate plans to really、uh, expand our geographical uh, reach. Um, obviously, uh, there are always discussions about if and when you know there, 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 we will add a country to to a portfolio. But uh, today, there, 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 right now, I cannot really comment on that. I think one model that usually、uh, works well for us and is maybe even the the, the faster and easier way to tap into a market and extend our reach is through our cross-border activities, which I think、um, in the presentation I mentioned a little bit. So I think、uh, when it comes to, to China and Hong Kong, and I, I think also、uh, with some Korean merchants already, we are act actually、um, extended our presence there through, a,、uh, through cross-border activities where we allow、uh, local sellers in those markets to、um, basically list their products on our platform. And I think that's That's one of the the options we are evaluating right now. Which markets、um, are the next where we can then、um, bring local businesses online that actually also have an interest and need to have an appetite for Southeast Asia, and、um, and is the right model、uh, to do. So, do we have local operations or not? Do we have a satellite office? Do we work with a partner, or simply do we only do it with our logistical footprint? So, I think there are a lot of options that we're evaluating right now. I cannot give you an answer. Um, because right now we're still focusing on our six core markets and the cross-border activities in those markets that were already set up and improving those. But the moment we are very happy with our cross-border cross -border performance overall and are having through our logistics solution LGS a way to to scale that further in other markets, we will definitely、uh, think about doing so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. 哦、oh, ，Thank you, Mr. Russell、yeah.。我们谢谢 Gino。好，我们掌声鼓励一下，好吗？谢谢。好，刚才这个问题是 Lazada 在台湾的策略，很可惜 Lazada 现在不在台湾。哈，但是刚才 Mr. Russell 也顺便提到了，他在 PPT 中还没有机会提到了，就是这个跨境的电商。那目前台湾的商家是可以借由 Lazada 跨境电商服务触及到其他东南亚的。市场的好，呃，时间有限，有没有第二位？好哇，这位小姐，谢谢您哇，徐州举得这么热情哈，好棒哈，然后谢谢你美好的笑容哈，就是我们电话电信的同仁，请。So hello, this is Bonnie. And、uh, 对不起，我你用我的麦克风，他会听得比较清楚。Bonnie, okay, so hello, Russell. Thank you for your presentation. And in fact, this is my like experience,、um, because like I just finished my MBA in France, and I know that my friends now they are also creating an e-commerce app to for the merchandise. And the other day, I was talking with them. We realized that for them to they have to manage a lot of sellers, especially to keep the information like the products online, to prevent vulgarity. 
So I would like to know because for your your platform, you have a lot of sellers. How do you manage them to provide a very good and decent content? Thank you. So, so to the way the way I understood the question, thank you for your question. The way I understood is how are we able to manage tens of thousands of sellers and give all of them a good experience? So if that was your question, I'm going to respond to that. I think um, it's it's obviously it's obviously it works through technology. So we we both have a big team that is taking care of the key brands, the key merchants um, that, that really are, are very hungry, have a strong appetite for growth, who consider online a, a very important channel to them. And maybe they already make a significant share of their business or even the majority share of their business already online. So these are the ones that we really work very, very closely with uh, and, and probably even have like calls uh, and communication emails on a daily basis, Week, weekly meetings uh, with more senior people, and then on a monthly or quarterly basis, um, my chief commercial officer or I even join these meetings where we then talk about you know, long-term planning, six months plan, 12 months growth plan. So we have a dedicated team that actually takes care of our key accounts. But then the larger share, uh, and we call that mid and long tail merchants, um, that basically want to try it out, they upload a couple of products, um, they give it a try uh, and, and, and still need to learn. We have a, a, a different way of working with them. So first, we all train those merchants um, um, in our office. We have a face-to-face -face or a digital video webinar training where we train them how to use our systems, how to use our tools, and how to use our reports. And I think that continues through our Lazada University where we continue to educate our merchants what is the, uh, on, 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 the, on the upcoming phase of their business. So first, maybe you just upload products, but then you need to start looking into improving your content, driving campaigns, reading the reports, uh, understanding how, what drives conversion rates. So we have a lot of automated reports that are being sent out. We provide a lot of tools that those merchants then can use uh, uh, to, to manage the growth of their business themselves. So basically, it's, it's two ways how to make uh, merchants, you know, perform better and, and help them grow. First, through the dedicated team that we have, and the second part would be, would be technology. So everything we do, the Lazada Seller Center app, the reports, Seller Center itself, with all the analytics behind um, the trainings, it's all driven by technology improvements um, so that the merchants can really start scaling up the business themselves. And once they reach a certain size and they want to really scale it up further, then we will provide always the right solutions at the right time, logistics solutions, marketing solutions, or even, you know, then provide a dedicated key account manager that takes care of their performance of their daily business uh, every day. 好,谢谢这个问题,因为Mr.Russell先生必须待会要离开,所以我们现在这边告一段了,我待会等他离开之后再跟各位解释这一段的重点。Mr. Russell, thank you very much for your sharing. It's too bad that you cannot be here in person, but we look forward to hosting you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Mr. Hans-Peter Russell. Thank you. See you soon. 刚才的第二个问题是关于这个怎么样管理这么多卖家。那事实上刚才Mr. Russell把他的卖家分成两类。一类其实已经有online experience,自己搞包都有电了。这一类当然比较容易互动了。那第二类,但是也是比较大的一类,是其实他在online的经验是比较少的。刚才Mr. Russell就说他们有很多的tools,他一直强调这个tools工具。他有这个APP能够让卖家去管理他的orders 包括他有像Lazada大学可以给这些新手卖家一些教育 包括他有非常好的support 但是大家的问题跟他的互动，以及他的回答，形容流水好像都排好似的，没有排好吧，Jamie？好，所以很厉害，我们掌声给彼此鼓励一下，好不好？I'm <笑> so proud, so proud to be here.